today, day 16, is an interesting one. And I think uh, you're going to, hopefully you'll get this. I, first, I didn't get it when I looked it up. So the, the prompt for day 16 is petal, P-E-T-A-L. So, of course, that's petal, petals of a flower. So I, I got that part. And I was surprised when I plugged in and searched the word petal for the Bible that um, actually it came up in a different version than I usually read. So let me put this on here. And let me walk you through what I found, what we learned today. So I'm going to put 16 petal right there. Okay, so what came up was Psalm, Psalm, listen to me, James. James 1, verse 11. So I'm going to read this verse to you. And then I'm going to explain to you what it is. So obviously, petal, you can tell I used, uh, you know, one of my silk flowers and a pretty button. And I just love the colors. And then the other thing that I did was, if you remember, when I showed you the cover of this book, these uh, pretty stems I uh, told you in the very beginning when I made the journal is how I made that is I cut five of each of these out and layered them and I decided to keep the pieces of paper that I cut them out of so I have a bunch of those and I just thought today that was a perfect background for the petal so let's read what James um, 1 11 says for the sun rises with its heat and dries up the meadow. The petal of the flower falls off and its beauty is lost forever. Now here's the strange next connection. So also the rich person in the midst of his pursuits will wither away. So you're talking about a flower and nature, right? And then all of a sudden it flips over to a rich person. <laughs> And so when I looked it up on my Blue Letter Bible app, um, I just want to read a little bit of this to you because I think this makes more sense and I understand it. So the petal is in the NET version. I think that's New English Translations is uh, what that means. And so it says, um, as much as it was appropriate for the lowly to rejoice when they are lifted up by God, so it is appropriate but far more difficult for the rich to rejoice when they are brought to humiliation by trial. So let's say that again. Basically, this is David Guzik in the Blue Letter Bible for James 1, 9 to 11. He's talking about that um, we, we are, we give praise and thanks to God when God raises us, right? Um, and, and so we rejoice when we're lifted up by God is what he's saying. But if you are a rich person, you wouldn't be raised up higher. God is going to bring you to uh, kind of humility. And that rich person actually has all of their riches and values in things that fade away. And so what he's talking about here is that as the poor brother forgets all of his earthly poverty, so the rich brother forgets all of his earthly riches. And then by faith in Christ, the two have to be equal. And then it says, so um, we can understand the relative poverty and riches as trials or tests of a living faith that a Christian may deal with. It nonetheless seems that James has made a sudden shift in his subject from trials and wisdom to riches and humility. And in some ways, the book of James is like the book of Proverbs or other Old Testament wisdom literature, and it can jump from topic to topic and back again. So it says, because as a flower of the field, he will pass away. So trials serve to remind the rich and the high that though they are comfortable in this life, it is still only this life which fades as the grass grows brown and the flowers fade away. So even though my flower is pretty and, and clear and bright, it's like I'm going to pretend it's when it first bloomed, right? But as the sun heats the flower, we know what happens, especially to those flowers that only bloom for one day. So the riches of this world are certainly going to fade away. And James says that the rich man will also fade away. But if we put our life and our identity into things that fade away, we fade away also. 
how much better to put our life and our identity into things that will never fade. If a man is only rich in this world, when he dies, he leaves his riches. But if a man is rich before God, and then when he dies, he goes to his riches. So I thought that was really, uh, like I said, at first difficult to understand, but the more I read it and as I'm speaking it again to you, I just think it's perfect for petal, isn't it? That we are reminded of the beauty of the flowers. And so when you're outside and you look at the, um, your gardens or just see flowers, they're just so beautiful and they make you feel so good. And we thank God for the beauty that he's given us. But he also, it's a reminder, it does not last and so then you go to the next step of, well, I don't want to put all my faith, my trust, and my hope in things that don't last. Because the only place to put my hope and trust is in Jesus. He is my Lord and my Savior. So that's day 16 pedal. And I'm going to leave us with Romans 15, 13 today. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Blessings. See you tomorrow.